and then um, I merged it with another company and we formed Sanjian Therapeutics and after three years we uh, split Sanjian Therapeutics into two companies, one is the product oriented company which we sold and then the safety discovery I floated in 2005 uh, with the advanced technology in bioinformatics and structural guided drug design. So, what was my journey? It was full of challenges to be, to say the least. It was not easy, but it was, uh, uh, it is pretty uh, interesting. So, four companies I have founded so far, Structural Bioinformatics, Engine Therapeutics, Focal Synthesis and CPN Exploring. So, uh, experience in the biotech company with a co-founder, as structural informatics uh, in 2000, in 1996, I raised about $53 million and then uh, we had excellent collaborations with different uh, corporations and government agencies and we had several first to market technologies. People are now talking about what is called as cloud computing and we had figured something out like this way back in 1988 where we had uh, envisioned and we constructed a bioinformatics platform where a lot of the data will sit in our servers and then people will be able to uh, log in from different uh, parts of the world, access the data as well as manipulate the protein structures and the ligands and understand the structure function relationship. Uh, our technology was called as uh, Structure Bank and we launched it in 97, but it was a uh, very, very early form of the cloud computing technologies. At the uh, Sengent uh, Therapeutics, we, the company was too big, we had to realign our resources and also we had to downsize the people. And we did more intense fee-for-service projects, which means um, you keep that many number of people employed who can service the uh, customers. So it is a customer-oriented company, where if you have four projects, you keep 16 people or 14 people like that, and no extra person will be there in the companies. So that way you cut down the cost. Yet, uh, the people who are working for you are able to produce in a very effective fashion uh, whatever uh, technology that they have to contribute. Yeah. And then I found a course that, uh, for, uh, focus synthesis and safety discovery. In the structural bioinformatics, the scientific philosophy is very simple. Uh, sequence is not the end, that is the protein sequence. It is just the beginning. Drugs do not interact just with sequence in one dimension, but they actually interact with three dimension the structure of the protein. Initial round, $5 million, and then uh, subsequent round, we raised with $50 million plus. Boundaries, and then we had several collaborations. At Structural Bioinformatics, uh, we worked on different projects for different customers. And uh, as you can see in this slide, we have worked in therapeutic areas like inflammation, diabetes, cancer, asthma, inflammation, and so on. And uh, they range from different targets like kinases, phosphatases, kinase, interleukin, growth factors, etc. And many of the compounds are either gone into preclinical development or under uh, multiple uh, uh, clinical development. Uh, many of those have been taken in by the customers for further development. But this is actually a success story where you have a platform technology applied to different targets and then the customers will move back and then uh, uh, found their own uh, work. So this was the form of outsourcing that was used to happen about 15 years ago in the United States where bigger pharma companies and bigger biotech companies will come to smaller biotech or smaller companies to form collaborations. Now it has gone to the next level where bigger pharma, bigger biotech and smaller biotechs in the US are looking to outsource or looking for assistance in either universities uh, in the United States or abroad or with smaller companies or companies who can service, provide services in the drug discovery area in India and China. So there is tremendous scope now where if you have the right skills and if you have the right attitude, there are opportunities uh, in India as well as in the US to utilize the experiences that you have in biotechnology or the education that you have in the uh, broad area of biotechnology to bring it into the pharmaceutical sector uh, to the US. Okay. Sanjay Therapeutics again, uh, 
this is our uh, offshore to destruction for informatics. The total uh, funding raised for this company was $90 million. Um, there, uh, we got several patterns and uh, we had several companies in different areas like uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, Copenhagen, Denmark, and then Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So as you can see here, now a small company has now grown into uh, about 180 people and uh, it became harder for us to manage uh, the technology development as well as people in these different geographical areas. And the type of uh, capabilities that we had at Sengen, uh, comprehensive uh, at Sengen, uh, Therapeutics is a comprehensive drug discovery platform. So there we have bioinformatics, uh, by means of gene modeling, and then uh, uh, bioinformatics with sequence and structure analysis, X-ray crystallography, each leads platform for generating in molecules using protein structures, and then computational chemistry and capabilities for understanding structure function relationship between ligand and the protein, but also for small molecule design. We had good, good full-fledged pixel chemistry and other types of analysis capabilities in house. So the, cap the capabilities of Sanyan Therapeutics, we were able to do, go all the way from sequence information to a preclinical development candidate in uh, six months to nine months in a small biotech environment like Sanyan Therapeutics. So we were using all those capabilities that I mentioned there uh, to provide what are called as uh, risk-based uh, risk discovery capabilities. That is, the platform is used for free for service, and the risk is low to medium because the customer will pay us the running cost for the research as well as for the upfront payment. So near term, the revenues are good. Upside potential is low because uh, you develop the molecule, you discover the molecule, you give to the customer, but you're really not sure if the customer is going to uh, develop it further uh, based on which you're going to get the royalties and so on. But with this type of uh, fee-for-service model, we were able to generate a revenue stream and then break even in the company. That means the company was not uh, losing money. With the drug discovery, that is, if you one were to bring drug, drug discovery into the company and you want to do all that discovery, development, everything, then the risk is very high because uh, we have to spend a lot of money in order for us to move the compound from discovery stage all the way to development stage. But if the company, if, the, if we do it, all the uh, cars fall in place, then the potential is very, very high. You might have seen recently a number of deals are being made. Uh, for example, in San Diego, a company called Amelian was bought out by Bristol Myers Squibb for several billion dollars. And Facebook bought so many companies both here as well as everywhere else. So it all depends. You know, if you want to take the risk, then the big companies will come and buy you out, which means all the employees also make money. With the focus synthesis I found in 2004, the idea was different. We know that in big pharma as well as in biotechnology companies, chemists are busy synthesizing the final molecule. So they don't want to spend a lot of time synthesizing what known as building blocks. The building blocks are smaller fragments of the uh, of a parent molecule that are going to be ultimately either a drug candidate or candidate that would be potentially screened for drug like activity. So what we decided to do at focus synthesis was to uh, develop these kinds of building blocks and then sell this by means of an electronic catalog, just like you would find in uh, Amazon.com, where it will be listed and then you sell the, um, uh, the compounds. The sapien discovery uh, established in 2006, uh, 2006, which is um, made up of two people, actually management. The two of us founded this company. And in this company, we decided that we will not take any uh, venture capital money or angel investor money. So we invested in this company and we uh, show you some of the, the technologies we have. And we own this company 50-50. My capabilities is uh, structure guided drug design, computational chemistry, and bioinformatics. Shankar's capabilities are um, protein biochemistry, X-ray crystallography, structural biology, 
and biological assays. So she manages all the wet labs, and I do all the management as well as the uh, structure guided design in situ work. We have an uh, excellent scientific advisory board whom we try to access as and when it is, when, when it is needed. Our business model is very simple. We use our professional to generate revenue. So, which means the kind of people that we hire should be able to jump into projects very quickly, learn the background of the project, and then develop uh, and then give results uh, based on the customer. Okay. And then we use our science to deliver services to biotech and pharma companies. And then we apply our science to procure government grants to further enhance the technology and then build them, build long term value for the company. So, as a scientist, now there are multiple options that people like you may have. Number one, and the easiest, well beaten path is to become a faculty in a university or a college. And there you do either pure teaching or you do a combination of teaching and research or you do simply research as it happens in um, IITs and IAC and things like that. And ICER, you do a combination of teaching and research. Or you can go to other type of CSIR labs or other types of labs and then you do pure research there. So that is one aspect. And the second aspect of being a scientist in is this. You can work for big farmers or big companies, like for example, if you want to talk about India, maybe Biocon, maybe Anthem Biosciences, maybe Syngene, maybe BMS, and other companies that are out there. Of course, they're always going to look for experienced people. They'll say, uh, you don't have so much experience and 20 years in the industry, and this and that. So, based on what they ask of you, you have to Tailor your resume properly so that you at least get a foot in the door in terms of an interview in many of these companies. So that is the biotech company. The third type of company that you can work for is the services company like ours as well as for Singing, where most of the research is done for somebody else. Like Sayer went up in Hyderabad, Dr. Reddy Labs, and then uh, Origin, Fire Things, and things like that. They are all doing fee for service. So, the Sapien Structure Based Red Discovery Services are the following. Genes leads platform technology. It's for generating small molecule leads in 60 to 90 days. That is what we do is we select the protein target of interest. We analyze the three dimensional structure of the target. Then we also uh, get the so called neighboring proteins, which are called as anti targets. That is, these are the targets which you don't want your small molecule to interact. Therefore, there should be no um, non-selective interaction with these other proteins. So, that is the target anti-target analysis we do. And then we uh, generate multiple chemical scaffolds. That is more than one lead molecule generated uh, as verified by synthesis and biological activity. And our capability uh, of the technology works uh, both uh, for enzyme targets as well as for uh, protein protein interaction targets. Okay, and then X ray crystallography survey uh, that is for protein small molecule protein crystal structures as well as for protein protein targets as well as protein antibody structure. So, here uh, some of you might know you have to clone the protein, express the protein, and then uh, grow them in uh, large quantities, purify them to 95%, 96%. Crystallize the protein and then use X ray crystallography to zap the protein, X ray crystals with X ray, and then solve the structure to get the three dimensional structure that is the X ray crystallography. And then custom protein modeling services. This is part of the bioinformatics services where you try to understand the three dimensional structure of the protein by looking at the sequence information. And this type of a large scale sequence analysis and structure uh, development is uh, very popular in countries like India where bioinformaticians are working on this all the time. So, this is the one way where the bioinformatics became very popular when they moved from structure to sequence to structure. Okay. So, does a platform technology work? And these are the different examples. What I am shown here is if you see here, this is the pathway where the small molecule is moving towards the clinical candidate. And these are different types of targets that is of interest uh, for the customers or for our results, which we work on. 
that is having a bigger generated small emission small molecule leads. That is, these are small molecule chemicals having drug like properties, having a biological activity with the target of interest. For example, it could be ID1, which is a cancer target, GDPS, which is an antibacterial target, ZAP70, which is a cancer target, and so on. So we are able to identify molecules, uh, either multiple leads or initial leads, and then uh, these compounds are moved, uh, some of the compounds are moved to clinical stage also. So as you can see here, using the knowledge of the science that I have learned over several years and the experience that I have from different companies, uh, I am able to formulate a company and then utilize the capabilities and the experience to develop and discover small molecules uh, uh, for uh, different companies. So uh, you should also keep in the back of your mind, you know, there may be very challenging to do something now today, but every challenge that you're facing today, as you go on uh, in your life, you'll be able to uh, use, 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 use that experience in an effective fashion to be very productive and to move on with your career. So we have very rich uh, experience working with the partners and these are different companies that we have worked for and we are still working for the discovery and lead optimization. So as you can see, we have worked with several big farmers as well as um, both Europe, US and uh, Japan. We also worked with universities and government organizations like the NH and so on. And uh, also the smaller companies like ROX, ROX Pharmaceuticals, ACOR, and things like that. With ACOR, now we are trying to extract a natural uh, product from uh, sea water, and then that has uh, that has shown some antibacterial properties. So we are helping them optimize the molecule for them. Next, we also work uh, using the extra strong capabilities. We have worked with the, some of these companies, which include the big farmers as well as small companies. So as you can see, if the company is small, if the pricing is right, and if you have the right type of people to do the work with the right philosophy and uh, uh, chemistry, you can indeed uh, have a number of partners or uh, collaborators to apply the, your scientific knowledge in producing the final product for some of these customers. Okay, our staffing principles are very simple. Um, there is, if we are going to have a product uh, project where uh, there is a product that needs to be discovered or developed, in it, then we are going to um, staff the project well so that we don't have any shortage of the number of people working in the project, and then try to replace or reassign staff. If some of the people are having a problem or are having a tough time delivering their, their scheduled deliveries within the product. During staff selection, that is the interview process, we try to find out if the person can work within the type of constraints that we have, namely smaller facility, um, salary constraints, as well as benefits and schedules. And then we normally do not give it excess demand by the people. That is, sometimes uh, the scientists, uh, they think, uh, you know, they are worth more than what they really are delivering. And they may try to demand more. It happens especially in the US, not in the India. So we don't give it to those kinds of demands. And we have a very strict termination policy. That is, we terminate people for cars if they don't deliver. But we don't unnecessarily uh, antagonize people. But we do treat the staff very courteously and consider every staff to be an equal asset to the company. Because we strongly believe a company is built by a very capable set of staff and each staff is important. You can't just pull out one staff just because, you know, if somebody else doesn't like it. And then we are looking for opportunities in the biotech today. I'm sure you all have heard about it or you've been seeing in papers or different logs or through your friends that it is very difficult to find a job. Is biotechnology is even going to be viable? Is it even worth doing something more in biotechnology? Or we should just forget biotech and then go into some multinational company to do some call center work or go somewhere else. Okay. You have to kind of uh, divide the whole biotech field 
these uh, functional areas that you are likely to uh, find a reasonable position. But uh, the types of biological uh, biotech companies that are out there, both in India, or China, or even the US, are very simple. They could be categorized into the following categories. Companies that produce biological products, the very first company that comes to you in India is Biocom. Small molecule products, companies like Anthem Biosciences, Origin Biosciences, Dr. Reddy Labs, and things like that. Diagnostic products, services business, that is uh, like Origin, Advanus, Sai Adventum, service business, generic product, that is generic manufacturers like Reddy Labs and others, uh, device products, that is still. Uh, not uh, very popular in India, but it is coming there. That is, you develop uh, uh, the delivery of, uh, of the drugs to uh, specific devices, could be small, could be big. It's a very big area. Or it could be clinical trials companies, antibody and protein reagent manufacturers, stem cell research companies, more and more of those companies are coming in. And they're also now part of the hospitals. For example, Geostar in Ahmedabad is one of those companies. Stem cell research companies, that is part of that. Academic research institutions, academic teaching institutions, and hospitals uh, research uh, that do research the stem cells, clinical trials, etc. So, those are the different areas where now you need to look for uh, possible opportunities. And if you look carefully, even uh, in a hospital like Narayana Rudhyalaya in Bangalore, uh, there is a research wing. So you got to find out who is in charge of the research and how they hire, and then try to see what kind of positions are there in, in hospitals like that. There is similarly, there is a um, hospital uh, in, in near Chennai, in a part of the MGR University, where you can also uh, do some research in the hospitals. Okay. So what we're doing right at Sapien Discovery is we have licensed the technology in an exclusive fashion uh, from our previous company. We acquire the required computational structural biology components. Then we also have uh, built this company as a services company with minimum component concept. And then we plan to grow in house portfolio products with the government grants. And then we have a good uh, scientific advisory report to guide us along. So we already have a, we are already a company with IP established, and then we have patents for anthrax lethal factor uh, inhibitors and so on, and several other applications are still pending. So this is a company not just with uh, uh, a standard uh, capabilities, but also we have IP. So what we're doing, the other thing we do, we do doing right is we are not really buying brand new equipment, which really take a lot of the money out. We buy used equipment, but are working, and then all the equipment that we buy are all paid up front, so we don't have any debts. And then the company is fully functional without any VC or other types of investment. And the company we already have revenue, and uh, we slowly expand based on the capital. So we also are thinking about something in India, uh, where what we want to do is to keep most of the core talent here in the U.S. because we have developed a lot of those big, uh, the high-end technologies, and we have uh, some of the capable people working here. But we want to train some scientists back home at Sapien Discovery India, where it will be very cost-effective to access and utilization of the talent from India. And we want to use, utilize that for bioinformatics support, namely classical bioinformatics, protein modeling, annotations, protein informatics development. And then in the computational chemistry support, we want to do virtual library building, uh, literature analysis, method development, and then drug-like picture analysis, and uh, skin informatics, and docking and supporting tasks. And we also want to extend the wet lab. So for the wet labs, we want to think about the protein production and crystallography. We want to develop uh, the protein expression capabilities in multiple systems like the humans, PKA, which is very, very challenging in this country. And then lastly, protein production. Uh, that, that could be a good business by itself if we can produce large scale proteins of very important, so good importance for people. Then that itself could be sold by catalogs and then we can make money. Literature analysis and then protein modeling for novel protein as needed to be used for the protein constraint design in structural biology. Uh, a few closing thoughts. Uh, this is just my general thought 
based on what I have undergone through as a student and as I was growing in my research areas. So do not be discouraged by what one or two potential employees tell you today in terms of the opportunities that are that are there. They may say, really, it's going to be very hard to find anything. You may have to change the field, or the jobs are not there. They're all either you know going to China, or we're not able to hire many people today because of no revenues. If you go back and look at what is really happening, the research and development in the U.S. is scaling down in the big farmers, especially big farmers want to be purely marketing and distribution. But they are establishing centers for research in India and China. So opportunities are growing in India and China. Indian funding for biotechnology is increasing as I see uh, every day. The government is also very interested in increasing the biotechnology effect in India. So opportunities in the institutes and universities will be opening up. It if not already, they open up. And try to be flexible in your so-called ideal career. Uh, that is, you cannot get an ideal career today or even next year. It will fall into place ultimately. You know, maybe two, three years, you work at the same company, then suddenly you find your niche, and therefore then slowly you'll become ahead of the research, or you'll go into business development, or even go into marketing. Who knows what? So the ideal career will fall in place. So right today, just you should worry just about getting uh, a sort of a job based on the experience and the education that you have. Then take what you can get today and give it 110 percent effort. That's what I would tell all my people. It may not be the ideal job. It may not be the best thing that you want to do. You may not even want to do this on a daily basis for several years. But do it at least for some time, but when you are doing it, give it your 110% effort and the rewards will come. Your boss will notice that you are really doing the best you can under the circumstances and then he, will, he or she will try to uh, understand your requirements and then try to place you in a suitable department. Enjoy the, enjoy the freedom that is given in the scientific uh, environment. As against frigid environment like in a call center. In a call center, you can't really be creative. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a, it's like a job. You punch your time. You go in there, and then you are there in the phone or whatever for eight to ten hours, and then you go home. Really, there's no. You're not really doing anything creative there, but only money is more. In the scientific environment, you are really using your capabilities and your research uh, experience and your education very well to develop something new. So that's very important. Because you are really creating something. Uh, so, call centers may look attractive now, but it will take a big physical and emotional toll uh, after several years, you know, working 12, 15 hour days and night shifts and things like that. On the other hand, you know, when you're doing research, even though sometimes you may have uh, late nights, it's very really satisfying because you're really learning something new every day and you're applying what you've learned in a very uh, cogent fashion. Just uh, a little bit of uh, suggested readings, and this, these are all a little bit older books, but still they are still good. Uh, whatever the philosophy there is all good. And uh, Biotech Century, that is what happened in the last 20 30 years in biotechnology, is covered by the first book. And then the, this, the key three, the three powers for empowerment, the, the key, three keys to empowerment by Blanchard, is the famous management guru, is very important. Uh, that will help you become good managers because today you may be a scientist, but tomorrow you may have people working under you. And whether you're in the university or in the industry environment, you still you become a manager and you need to learn how to manage people. So that's very important. That book is very good one. And then entrepreneurs, maybe suddenly you want to you want to launch a company, you want to start a company and you want to raise money. So this is a very nice book, uh, the third book that I listed here. To look into to find out how money can be raised. And then to understand the concept of drug discovery, what it is to discover the molecule, optimize it, and then develop it into a drug is a nice book to read. And then the human side of managing the technical technological innovation, that's extremely important. Anybody can become a manager, but it's hard to be uh, show your human touch even when you become a very tough manager. Steve Jobs is one of the um, greatest uh, entrepreneurs around. You know, he, he died, as you know, a few, a few months ago. 
but he was a very, very poor manager in the sense he never really treated people the way they should be treated. So, uh, you know, he, he is within the company, within Apple, he is remembered more for his tough attitude and the way he was being nasty to people than for his innovations. The outside world is very happy the way he has innovated and brought new technologies and new uh, devices uh, for consumers. But as a manager, he is not very good. But so you have to have a human touch for the management. That's a good book to follow. And I'd be happy to take uh, questions and comments. Thank you, Arjun and Sanjay, for your time. If you have any questions, you can ask them. You will be very happy to hear you. Online students can text the comments or questions to the Arjun and Sanjay. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Anything you want to ask? Okay, let's look at the online students. Do they have any questions? Was that a question? Okay, we have Poonam saying that we are very happy to hear your talk. It was a wonderful talk, I ever heard. Okay. Students, do you have any questions? You can ask to Dr. Kandam Nair because he is very busy. He has got limited time here. If you guys have any questions, you can ask him right away. Ajmi, Deepak, Deepika, Jasna, Komal, Punam, Priyanka, Sirisha, do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, students are uh, pretty astounded by your talk, uh, sir, and they don't have any questions at this, at this point in time. Probably they will mail you whenever they have some questions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they can mail you the questions as and when they have it. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Nazamnara, for your time. And it was a pleasure having you here. It was very motivational. We will be thankful to you for all the uh, you know, information which you have provided to us, Biotechnica, as well as our students. We we'll certainly look forward to your guidance in future as well. Uh, now, uh, students can take a break of two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, sir, I will coordinate with you on my side. Sure. Bye bye. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you.